Does it ever feel like you need to win the lottery to buy a home here in the Toronto GTA communities of Peel, Halton, and Dufferin? If so, I have some good news for you. Today, I'm sharing five creative strategies that you can use if you've been struggling to afford a home. I'm Evelyn Lopez with the Evelyn Lopez Realty Team and iPro Realty here in the Toronto GTA West communities of Peel, Halton, Dufferin, and Wellington. If you watch and enjoy this video, please let us know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, drop a line in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, then be sure to hit the subscribe button for more Toronto GTA West real estate advice and news. Now let's start discussing some of my favorite strategies to share with my first time home buyer clients. Number one, try house hacking. It's a real estate investment strategy in which participants use their homes to generate income in order to offset their expenditures. For example, renting out a room or a basement apartment within your home. In some cases, house hacking may make it possible for you to qualify for and afford your first home. A lender, for example, may approve you for a larger mortgage if you purchase a home with immediate income potential from a secondary unit within the house, such as a basement apartment. You can also use your home to earn extra income. For example, you can make your home available for photo shoots or even on Gigster or Peer Space. You can offer paid parking on your driveway on a site like Curbflip or Spot Hero. Number two, you can tap your network for help with funding. Another established method for affording a first home is to lean on family or friends for financial help. Getting assistance with down payment or other borrowing costs can go a long way towards making your home ownership dreams come true. As long as you don't mind asking for help, a free and clear gift that's intended for your down payment is an ideal arrangement since it will allow you to borrow less overall or if that's too big an ask your loved ones could pitch in towards closing or moving costs alternatively your loved ones could help by co-signing your loan for example if their credit score is a lot higher than yours it could enable you to secure a lower interest rate so that your monthly payment is more affordable you certainly wouldn't be the only one leaning on family to help afford a home in today's prices. According to the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation's latest mortgage consumer survey, around a third of recent home buyers used gift money to help buy their homes. What's more, 22% admitted that they wouldn't have been able to buy or afford a home without it. Meanwhile, a CIBC study from 2021 found that many parents are gifting increasingly large amounts to their children to help fund for down payments. Just be sure your parents or other generous loved ones are aware that they are giving a gift and not a loan, that they are willing to put that in writing. A lender will want proof that this money isn't adding to your debt burden and may require documentation from your benefactors. Another way to tap your network for help is to crowdfund part of your down payment or ask for monetary gifts instead of tangible ones. For example, if you're getting married soon, you could skip the wedding gift registry and ask guests to contribute funds to your hoped for home purchase instead. Number three, look to other unconventional money sources from special programs and assistance. You could also cut some of your upfront mortgage costs by taking advantage of government programs, tax rebates, and other funding opportunities. For example, the Government of Canada's new First Home Savings Account, FHSA, initiative could help you trim your next year's tax bills as you gather money for your down payment. When you open an FSHA, you can root up to $8,000 per year of income to the account, tax-free, up to a maximum of $40,000. And you both open an FHSA account, you can squirrel away a combined $16,000 per year. You may also be eligible for a first-time home buyer's tax credit of up to $1,500, as well as other home buyer rebates, depending on the type of home you buy and where you choose to move. For example, you could get a substantial rebate on some of the GST HST taxes you pay when you buy a newly constructed or heavily renovated home. First-time homebuyers can also borrow up to $35,000 tax-free from their individual Registered Retirement Savings Plans, or RRSPs, to help beef up their down payments. First-time homebuyers can also save on their land transfer taxes to a maximum of $4,000 for the Ontario land transfer tax 
rebate and an additional 4000 if you are buying within the City of Toronto. And eligible buyers can also take advantage of the Government of Canada's First Time Home Buyers Initiative, which offers 5 to 10% of a new home purchase price in exchange for a cut of the home's equity. There are some conditions that apply. We also have lenders who offer down payment assistance of up to 15%, and we can connect you with a lender or mortgage broker who can educate you about your options and help shepherd you through the process. Be sure to check out our blog or some of our recent podcast episodes. You can find our podcast, Realty Bites, Conversations on Real Estate and Lifestyle, on your favorite podcast platform. Session 1 had 10 episodes specifically on ways to get into and finance your home. And number 4, you can expand your search. If you're having trouble finding a home within your budget, consider broadening your search criteria. You may be surprised by the kinds of deals that are available when you are willing to compromise. For example, if you're struggling to find an affordable home in your target neighborhood, expand your search area and consider homes that are a little further out of town or that are located in up and coming areas with lower starting prices. We would be happy to introduce you to some of the greater but less known neighborhoods that we consider hidden gems. You can also save money on your home purchase simply by dropping or revising some of your must-haves and settling for okay-to-haves instead. For example, do you really need two washrooms and a large backyard or would you settle single washroom space to add a second one in the future? And would small green cozy balcony or rooftop terrace still give you the outdoor time you crave? These types of compromises can sometimes shave tens of thousands off your purchase price. Similarly, if you don't mind rolling up your sleeves or working with a contractor on minor jobs, you can look for homes that need a little TLC. Just because a house looks dated doesn't mean it's destined to stay that way or that it will take a ton of money to spruce it up. In fact, a home with good bones but cosmetic flaws could be a perfect match. With less competition, you'll have a better chance of purchasing the home at an affordable price. You can then take your time to save more and fix it up to your taste. Keep in mind starter homes are rarely forever homes, but merely a first step into the property ladder. By gaining a foothold in the real estate market now, you can set yourself up to afford a more expensive property in the future. Just get into the market. According to Statistics Canada, the net worth of a typical Canadian homeowner has more than doubled since the start of the millennium, climbing from 323,700 in 1999 to 685,400 by 2019. The average net rent Renter's worth grew slowly during the same period, rising from 14,600 to 24,000. So we can help you find that first home so that you can start building your equity long-term and achieve your real estate goals. And the strategy that I always recommend that my first time buyer clients consider is to team up with friends or family. My favorite way, if you aren't wild about the idea of welcoming strangers into your home, you may want to consider co-purchasing with a friend or family member instead. This unconventional housing arrangement is also growing more popular as friends and family members cope with higher living costs and pooling their resources. According to Statistics Canada, multi-generational households in Canada has nearly doubled since 2001. Meanwhile, the number of households shared by roommates has grown even more rapidly, climbing by more than 50% during the same period. Arrangements can be made to customize and fit your circumstances. For example, you could purchase a home and then rent a portion of it to a loved one. Or you might consider co-buying a home with friends or family members so that you can step into the property ladder and start building equity together. Co-ownership could work out especially well for you long term if it helps you buy a home that's bigger, has more investment potential, or is located in a high demand area and so appreciates at a faster rate. Plus you get to see your loved ones more often and enjoy the coziness of shared living with people that you like having around. On the other hand, sharing is a big financial responsibility, like a mortgage. With friends or family could get messy, especially if you don't create clear-cut co-ownership agreements beforehand that outlines your mutual expectations, so plan carefully before you proceed. In addition, you may need to rethink the type of home you purchase. For example, a smaller home might be cheaper, but do you really want that much togetherness? all the time, we can help you set priorities and search for a suitable property. Hey, check out our blog post for more creative ways to afford your first home. You can find a link in the caption. Then reach out to schedule a free, no obligation consultation. We can create a customized plan to help you 
win big. As a home buyer or home seller here in the Toronto and area GTA West real estate markets.